Hi, my name is Darren Hanna, and welcome to Pocket Universe. On today's episode, we have Juanita Harrell from Silver Pixie Designs, Rodney Philpot from Rodney Philpot Designs, and Kingdom's game creator, Jacob Blake. Come on back right after this. And welcome back, everybody. I would like to welcome to the show Juanita Harrell, creator designer of Silver Pixie Designs. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. It's glad to be here. Tell me all about Silver Pixie Designs, where you got your inspiration to start and what it's doing. Well, um, I'm a bit of a, a collector of hobbies. So that's what I've done my whole life. I've collected various hobbies. Okay, so Silver, you collect hobbies. I collect hobbies. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. new. I have okay. a hobby collecting hobbies. Okay. Um, but, um, and so this happened, to, you know, uh, making jewelry happened yeah. to be one of the hobbies that I collected along the way. Okay. And, um, but when I started collecting this hobby, mm -hmm. it became more than a hobby. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it just became something that I, I just fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fell in love with it. And, um, and couldn't, couldn't, like before I would collect hobbies and I would, um, you know, get tired, get a little bored, move on to something new yeah. and, yeah. and went up. But then when it came to the jewelry, mm -hmm. never boring never boring, always something new, um, able to, every day is different because every day I'm coming up with something new to do. And yeah, you learn all the skills, mm -hmm. but you're always learning more skills, always learning new ways to do things. And, um, and you're always making something different. Okay. And it's completely up to my own imagination, which is awesome. So when you get inspiration for a piece of jewelry, mm -hmm. Where does it come from? Like, what's your main inspiration? It, 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 or comes, is there? it comes from a lot of different uh, places, um, but one of the places that it does definitely come from for me is um, um, like things that I read, a okay. lot of things that I read, and whatever. I'm a huge, huge fantasy buff, and mm -hmm. so I do a lot of fantasy reading, and so things that I read, and then also, you know, different movies that I watch, and different the feel that I get for different kinds of things that I watch. Sometimes it'll be just something I'll see some other type of uh, piece of jewelry and think, that's really interesting, but I bet if I did this and this and this, maybe I could make that into this. And so those kinds of things. So yeah, I just kind of pick it up almost from all around me. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got the inspiration, you got mm -hmm. an idea for something. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Is it sketched down? Is it just taken? Um, sometimes it's sketched down. It okay. depends on, on how detailed the piece is. Mm -hmm. um, if it's something that's that's you know um, going to be a little bit complex, then I'll do um, a couple of sketches and just try to get an idea firm in my head about where I want to go. Whether it'll end up exactly like the sketch, that's a whole other story. Because okay. sometimes once I start, it becomes something different. Sure. Um, because it's it's just how the wire goes. You know, because mm -hmm. all my all my jewelry is done. It's all wire working. And uh, all completely handmade. Um, I do. I make everything, including my own findings, like the, the earring wires, everything. I, I make it all myself from the wire. And um, but sometimes I'll just sit down and I'll have somewhat of an, a vague idea in my head about mm -hmm. what I want to do, and I'll just play, and see what comes out of it. So do you always like when you go to make a piece of jewelry? Mm -hmm. You say, okay, I got this. I really like it. Mm -hmm. And do you always make more than one say, say set of earrings? Do you always make more than one set, or is it do you just make one of a set um, of something and that's it? For the basic ones right now, like when I first started out, um, uh, when I decided that I was actually going to maybe I'm going to actually start selling my jewelry. Okay. Um, I thought you know maybe it'd be a good idea to get a couple of designs, make up make up a couple of designs that are going to work really well for just every day, anybody who who wants to wear them. And so sure. I kept them fairly basic. Um, so that I could make more than one pair. Okay. Uh, but now I'll, I'll do variations when it comes to, like I use a lot of different stones mm -hmm. so that there's different colors and that kind of thing. I'll use different uh, types of wire, whether it's copper. I usually stick to like copper or silver plated copper simply because I like to keep it, um, you know, quality but not too expensive so okay. that people can afford it, right? Sure. Because Because uh, uh, one of the things I've always hated is when you know, I see a really nice piece of jewelry and, and I, I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I really want to wear it. But it's too expensive, yeah. so I'm trying to try to do that. But yeah, so right now, yes, multiples. But um, with some of the stuff that I've been getting into lately, over the mm -hmm. last little while, maybe last couple of months or so, um, that I haven't really kind of shown to my customers yet, yeah. because I'm still working on it, prototyping and that type sure. of thing, um, is uh, more intricate pieces and mm -hmm. more, uh, and it's, it's leaning more towards a different direction with more um, complexity to the designs. And so once I get into that kind of thing especially if I'm doing like pendants and that kind of thing, sure. then it'll be more one-off because it's usually centered around a stone that maybe I'll only have one type of that stone. 
like a, a cabochon of some type, and I'll make a, um, a pendant from it, but it'll just be that one design, and then I'll do something completely different for the next one. So it, it, it varies. So there are, there's a kind of a mix. There's things that I'll do m multiples of because mm -hmm. I know that there are things that are easy that people like to wear. Yeah. And and um, and then there will, there will also be pieces that'll be a little bit more expensive because they're a little bit more work. Sure. And um, and and a little bit more complex in that way. Some people have something that's unique, yeah. and they'll know that this is a piece that nobody else will have. Now you brought along a couple of pieces there. Mm -hmm. If you want to show us. So right now, um, these are earrings that I've got. Um, um, that I've made recently. These are ones that are actually up on my website right now. Okay. Um, and these are just one of the styles that I've made. Mm -hmm. and I do have multiples of these styles because they're a pretty straightforward style. And okay. I do know that they, you know, they've been pretty popular certainly at the last few shows that I've done. Sure. Um, and just a simple earring mm -hmm. with a simple weave. And um, so that's something that I've that I've been doing a lot of. Yep. But now I'm starting to get into more into doing rings and pendants. Okay. Um, so right now, I'll hold up this one right here for you. Yeah. There we go. That is a pendant that I just um, that I completed for my sister. Actually, I made that one for my sister. That's beautiful. Um, and uh, that's so that's a one-off because I haven't done any more like that, and I probably won't. Yeah. Um, and I've also been getting into doing rings, and so these are just a few of the prototypes. Okay. Yeah. That I've been working on. And these are just the prototypes, which mm -hmm. means that they're they're probably going to change up a little bit. Change up a little bit. Yeah. And maybe get a little more polished. Um, but this is the beginnings of where they're going to be. So. Do you do uh, commission works? I do. You do? I do, yeah. Um, I've had a couple of people actually um, who had had asked me, well, if you've done this, could mm -hmm. you possibly do this for me? Sure. And give me, you know, give me some ideas about what they want, and then I've gone and done it, done it for them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so, yeah, that's something that I'm, I'm certainly interested in doing. It's 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 fun to take somebody else's um, input and then see what I can come up with in order to meet what they want. Sure. Yeah. Where do you sell your products to? Uh, right now, it's all online. All online. I don't have I don't have a store. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not in any of the stores here. I was in a couple of the stores when I was in New Brunswick. Okay, yeah. I just moved from New Brunswick, actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, eventually I may, you know, I may, um, um, you know, approach some various businesses here, and yeah. uh, and see whether anybody is interested in carrying any of my work. But right now, it is all online, and I do have, um, and I'm also, of course, on social media. On social media, right. every, everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere on social media. Yeah. What, what, what's your website address? Um, so now my website is um, the Square site. So it's silver-pixie-designs.square.site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and um, and then I'm on Facebook as uh, just Silver Pixie Designs, mm -hmm. and I'm on Instagram silver underscore pixie underscore designs. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming on the show today and telling us all about your work. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back after this. And welcome back. I'd like to welcome to the show Rodney Philpott, fashion designer with Rodney Philpott Designs. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Rodney, tell us about how you became a designer. Oh my God, it was a long time ago. I mean, I'm pushing, I'm past the 30 year mark right now. Yeah. I've gone through like, I started off like doing club kid clothes a long time ago. Okay. Then went into wedding dresses, but I do mostly right now. Mm -hmm. But then my assistant and my husband caught me into this idea of doing like themed corsets for like Comic-Con kind of stuff. So, and that's what we're branching into, just for fun. Oh, whoa. Okay, so where do you get your inspiration to from that? Like from the movies to TV, or do you make up your own your own versions of it? Obviously, just from comic books or from things online. Okay. Um, just take influences. We don't do exactly like replicas of anything. But sure. We're just kind of like to influences for like simple shape courses that we already have. Okay, so what line? Now you mentioned your wedding dresses and that. So mm -hmm. go go back a little bit. You started as a wedding we wedding designer. How mm -hmm. did you get into that? Before the wedding dress designer, I yeah. started off before the internet was big and you could buy like online things very inexpensively. Yeah. I dressed like all the girls for like the waitresses and stuff and all the club girls in Toronto, but that was a long, long time ago. Yeah. That was like 30 years ago. Then, once the uh, things online became very inexpensive, mm -hmm. it kind of killed that market. Yeah. So then I moved into wedding dresses. Wedding dresses. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone's interested in a wedding dress, mm -hmm. Do they come to you with an idea, or, like it's, uh, 
do they come to you with an idea of what they want and then you sit down with them and design it? Is that how, how does the process work? Well, there's a bunch of different processes. We have lots of samples in the store of ideas of things that we've done just to like give you like an inspiration or whatever. But lots of, most girls come to us with like, I want this, this, and this in a dress, but I can't find all of it together. Okay. When we sit down, we discuss fabrics and so on, and then it's all made to measure, obviously. Mm -hmm. So they can come in and say, like, I want this, I want that, but I don't want that on this exactly. one. Exactly. And, and I will give them guidance, too, because sometimes people have too many ideas for one dress. I'm like, I'm not doing all that together. <laughs> You're not doing all that. Yeah, that's just a, a dumpster fire. We can't put all that together. <laughs> So pick, pick three focal points, like not 12. <laughs> that was awesome. When, 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 they come into, uh, when they come in to order a wedding dress, so they come in, they got their design picked out, what happens from there? Like, is there a, like a standard amount of time for you to sit down and sketch out the dress? Or how, how do you take all these ideas and make it into a dress? Like, just sort of walk us through the steps a little bit more. Okay, so generally what happens is some will be interested in having a custom dress made. Mm -hmm. They'll call a book a consultation. They come and sit down with me and my husband, which is my business partner and partner in crime yep. the whole night. Long. They have at least an hour, and we go through the design features, uh, then the cost, obviously, yep. discuss fabrics, and so on. Mm -hmm. these, and most people don't order exactly that date. Usually they come back for a second consult after okay. they've looked around and things. But then we will book all, if they do decide to go with us, we'll take mm -hmm. a deposit. Yeah. and book backwards from their wedding, depending on their comfort level of when they want the dress done. And then we just go forward. So do you, if someone's getting, like what's the time frame for something like that? Well, it's, we always like at least six to eight months to book in for our time. Okay. But we, but we don't, I would, don't normally start a dress to probably three months before the wedding. Oh, okay. Because you might change your eye mind, you might gain or lose weight, you don't want to fatigue the fabric. Mm -hmm. So the cl I would say the closer to the wedding date to pick up your dress is better. Because who knows, you're talking about you eat it, you know, fun. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some horror stories. We've had one stuck in a vacuum cleaner before. A wedding dress stuck in a vacuum cleaner? Yeah, she was trying it on and while she was vacuuming and it didn't work very well. Oh, that didn't work out well at all. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when they pick up the wedding dress, uh, any alterations made, like if they're come like about a month before the the wedding, is is that usually then like the set time or is it? Well, like I said, you you go to you go through two design fittings, mm -hmm. which finalize exactly what you want it to look like, and then we go through three more fittings, which uh, is for like alterations, you would say, or like for sizing. Sure. And then the pickup is just when it's all steamed and ready to go. Yeah. If you do pick it up more than like two weeks before your wedding, we mm -hmm. still do like uh, if you if anything changes. Like I, you buy bigger shoes or smaller shoes, but we do we do honor like a thirty day uh, fit. Oh, okay. So you can bring it back as long as it's not two days before your wedding. Not, not, not two days. That's, no. that's well, we've done it, but we don't like it. <laughs> we don't like that kind of stuff. Do you guys offer anything uh, besides like the wedding dress accessories, net, or is that something? Oh, that's we do anything you want, basically. The shoes, so, the whole. Not shoes. No, not sorry, shoes. so okay. I shouldn't say anything. We no. do we veils, headpieces. We do alterations on other dresses. We mm -hmm. do prom stuff. We do mother the bride. Yeah. We don't do men's suits. We don't do men's suits. And that's a whole different, but a ball game. A whole, oh, completely different. Completely different. If now, it doesn't have boobs. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Rodney, back to the uh, comic book corsets, we'll call them. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little about how they're designed, how they're built, whatever you'd like to emphasize on them. Okay, so basically what we do is we think of a, th think of a theme first between both of us, kind of like sketch it out maybe, but mostly it's in our, in our heads. Sure. And then whatever we're designing, we'll pick a shape of a corset that will go with that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Like Wonder Woman, we always do like this, like certain, yeah. sh certain shapes work with certain characters better. Right. And then we pick a size and we just start to, uh, obviously you pick the fabrics that coordinate with the character. Yeah. And then you just start building it. So you build it from the base up. You usually have like a lining on the inside that makes it thicker. You put the decorative fabric over top just for the colors mm -hmm. and then all the boning. And then all the fun stuff just happens at the last couple hours, you would say, I guess. And they are laced up in the back with grommets and a, la a ribbon usually that does go from like a couple of sizes up, a couple of sizes down, which okay. is easier to fit. So it's it's really anybody can wear one. You don't have to be like a small, a medium, no. or a large. Where they're done up in the back, it's like a lace. Yeah. And you just can you do them up yourself? 
Uh, you can. It's a little difficult. Some okay. of some of our courses do have zippers in the front or like closures in the front also. Okay, yeah. But they're not that hard to do up. Uh -huh. So is this something that is going to you're going to be carrying as a regular item on your on your website and your line? Yes, definitely. We also we always carry like a full line of courses, and, and I, I think we have fifty two different shapes or something styles, okay. which we do in multiple fabrics, like wedding dress fabrics, proms kind of stuff, glittery stuff, yeah. leather and lace and see through stuff. We've like this is just a new concept, new theme we kind of came up with, and we do also like Disney princesses and all kinds of fun stuff. Any idea at all? Anything you, can, anything you can possibly come up with, we can probably do. can come to you guys and say, listen, I'd like to have a corset made in this, and this is what I'd like to have it look like, and you guys should just take the idea and run from there. I made one in seal before, been pony hair, cowhide. Everything. Everything. That is amazing. So, folks, if you'd like to find out more about Rodney Designs, sorry, Rodney Philpott Designs, how do we find you? Well, rodphilpott.com, not CA is the website, but Rodney Philpott Designs, both on uh, the internet, everywhere, it's like, you can Google me. I've been around for 100 years. <laughs> you have not. <laughs> <laughs> well, quite, almost. All right. And we're also at 452 Water Street. I was going to ask the address, 452 Water Street yes. in St. John's. Yes. Perfect. Well, thank you, Rodney, for being on the show today. Thank you for having and me. And thank you, Heather, assistant designer and model. And we'll be right back. Up. And welcome back. I'd like to welcome to the show Jake Blake, game designer. Welcome, sir. Hi, Dan. Thanks, thanks for having me. Jake, uh, tell me the name of your game and how you came up with the idea. So the name of the game is Kingdoms, and the way I came up with it is a bit of a funny story, is that um, I was like kind of just thinking about the next game I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that if it became like a long, dragged out process, or drawn out process, I didn't want to like hate what I was working on, like I did the last game I worked on. It okay. was just like an app, and I, I'm not proud of how it came out. I didn't like it, and I spent way too long on it. So I wanted the next game I wanted to make to be like something I could really be passionate about. Sure. And um, I decided that like I played trading card games for 20 of the 26 years of my life. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to do a trading card game, mm -hmm. and I was kind of just thinking about it one night before I went to bed, and um, I like woke up in the middle of the night with an idea, and like I had to sit down and like write it out, and I set up to like. 5 a.m. writing on this idea. In the middle of the night. <laughs> the of the night. <laughs> That's when it comes to you. It's when these ideas come to you kind of thing. I so. used to get, get like, like nightmares in the middle of the night, but you come up with, it, with games. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So where did it go from there? So uh, at first, I just kind of made some prototypes, worked on kind of... The game was actually originally called Hero Blitz. It's called Kingdoms now. Okay. And um, the original title was always a work in progress kind of thing. I didn't want to actually call it that. Mm -hmm. And um, so the idea was kind of like you have like your heroes and eventually that developed into having lords and then right. you have your kingdom and yep. you have you know your pawns and your spells and everything and, and it kind of just developed from there. We, like the idea just kept getting mm -hmm. built on, built on, built on. Like, so is it for anybody not too familiar with different types of gaming? That is it an actual board game or is it a card game? So it's a card game. All you need to play is the actual cards themselves, and yep. like that's it. Um, some dice or, or counters would help okay. in some scenarios, but because you have to keep track of like your life total and stuff. But, okay. Uh, but as far as it goes, it's like it's just a card. Like you only need the cards. That's all you need to play, mm -hmm. and you just you use the cards to kind of like battle each other. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you came up with the idea middle of the night. What happened from there? So we essentially, I ended up developing uh, a version for Tabletop Simulator, mm -hmm. just kind of so I can like demo with people. Sure. And one of my, uh, he's a really good friend of mine now. He's like my best friend now. Um, I just kind of met randomly on Tabletop Simulator working on the demo, and he actually has helped inspire a lot of the different ideas that are in the game now. And, oh, okay. Uh, the name change was his idea, actually. Yeah. And um, he kind of helped a lot with um, how the game kind of came to be from there, and uh, essentially now it's like a fully fledged thing where like you play as a, a high arc you and your opponent are both these hierarchs and you have your kingdoms and you have to you're just kind of like battling each other and it's um 
the uh, the idea of the game is actually like there's there's like a story and everything like that, but that's like going to be later on down the line. And that's what I was going to. So how many people can play the game? Is it just limited to two people at the same game? Uh, you can play between two and four players. You can play more. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend it unless you want to be playing the same game all night. Oh, okay. <laughs> the more players you have, the longer it takes to win. Sure. For someone to win, because then you have to take out everybody, right? Take so, everybody out. Yeah, so it, it takes a lot longer when there's more than four people. But you can play it in teams of two. You can play, like, one team versus another team. Mm -hmm. You can play, like, a free-for-all, one to four players. Sure. Again, more if you really want to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but essentially, yeah, it's like... It's like a two-player game, four-player game, three-player game, whatever you kind of want to make of it. Whatever you want to make of it. Yeah. Okay, so we got the idea. We got on on, this, on the site, done some tests, and what happened from there? So we've just kind of been trying to balance everything since then because we came up with, like, all the different card ideas. We have card ideas to do, Jesus, four sets of cards right now. <laughs> four sets of cards. <laughs> yeah, like... In the future, like, we have that many ideas just kind of, like, ready, but okay. we just spent the last two or so years, well, getting art, obviously, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a very good artist myself. So do you have, like, an actual artist that draws it all up, or is it done by computer? Uh, well, we have, uh, we have like, 11 artists right now. Oh, wow, 11 nice. 11 different artists, yeah. They're all local artists. Nice. Um, except one. One's in B.C., mm -hmm. um, and he's, like, on a work visa from, from Brazil. But, oh, okay. Uh, but other than that, like, everybody is pretty much a local artist, at least to Canada. Sure. And, uh... Like ninety percent of them are in St. John's. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah actually, I have some of the cards here. Yes, me. I was going to say we, yeah. we can see some samples of them. Yeah, so that's uh, one of them there. Now, what do, what does the numbers depict on the card? So the top left one here. Yep. That one depicts how much resources it costs to play it, mm -hmm. and then the bottom one here, that's their attack points. Yep. And then the bottom one here, that's their health points, and uh, when they fight, if the one of the fights has more attack. They yep. die. <laughs> obviously, they, they're not going to survive. But, um, and then the words in the little text box, just like, they all have like unique things that they can do. Like, um, the way I could explain to someone who hasn't really played a trading card game mm -hmm. is like, if uh, when, you, when you play a two in Crazy Eights, you draw two cards. Right. Or your opponent draws two cards. Kind of like that. Like, every card has its own unique effect. Its own uh, effect, yeah. yeah. So the cards, more or less, tell you what your health is, what your weapons are, and what your what your motivation is. If you're going to go out and kill somebody or steal something, or am I following that? Kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah. You, you, could, you could say that. Okay. Yeah, I want to try to make it nice and basic. For, <laughs> nice, and basic. <laughs> nice and basic. For anybody that doesn't know much about card games. There you go, yeah, exactly. So, okay, so you got, well, what's your plans right now for it? So, right now, uh, we plan on doing... Um, between now and the release date next year, mm -hmm. we want to release between, uh, say, like August and December of 2024. Yep. And um, in the summertime before that, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to try and get all the local game stores here in St. John's on board. Okay. With uh, doing open play tests where people can just come in and play the game, see if they like it, mm -hmm. you know, have fun with it. And then uh, we're also obviously going to be. Next year we're going to be at all the conventions that happen sure. here in St. John's and like the Ren Fair and yep. and um, Avalon Expo. Hopefully they'll go again next year. There you go. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be there playing the game as well, with people. Yep. Yeah. So where where's going to be your market to? Like you're, you're hoping down the road to have them have the cards at comic book stores so that people can come in and just pick them up. Yeah. So we're hoping to potentially get a publisher on the go between now and then. But if we don't, like, either way, we're going to do a Kickstarter. Okay. And we're going to launch the Kickstarter, and people can, like, uh, buy the cards there. And then once the Kickstarter's done, we're going to start distributing. We're going to use the money from the Kickstarter to start distributing to all the comic book stores. To all the comic book like, stores. Hopefully all across Canada and America, and then potentially look at, like, Europe, New York market eventually. Well, that's Hopefully. good. That'd be that's cool. good. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. When you dream, you got to dream big, man. Exactly. You got to dream big. You got to go big. You got to yeah. go big. That's you it. Go big, yeah. Now, what? What's your long-term goal for it? Um, for, for, for the story, the game, and the story for it. Like, you, you mentioned expanding on it. So the long-term goal for the game is to eventually have an automated digital version, as well as potentially a 
book or a TV show. I know it's like really no, like, no, that's the way. But <laughs> you got to plan big. But we really hope to be able to do a TV show, kind of explaining the story behind all of it. Oh yeah. And okay. explaining like because the, in the story of the show, characters in the show, it's its own story, mm -hmm. but as like a, like kingdoms as far as the card game comes like goes yep. it comes from them playing it in their universe they played in their universe like a form of chess or poker you see people like in the background playing it but like the story itself is like about the characters about the characters yeah. themselves yeah. well sir i want to say good luck with the game thank you thank you for coming in chatting with us today and we'll be right back after this i'd like to say thank you to juanita rodney jacob blake for being on today's show and also a big shout out to Amanda, owner and operator of Heroes and Hobbies, and Thomas here, the other owner and operator of Heroes and Hobbies. Come on back for the next episode. about this program.